Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and it's time for another whiskey tasting. And today, I'm going to send a shout out to Nick Streeter of Sellerman's Folly, another one of our Great Whiskey Lore Society members who's been with us for quite a while, and they have their own Patreon, actually. That is Sellerman's Folly out of Auburn, New York, so you may go check them out as well. They do cocktail classes, which is, is cool. I haven't gotten into the world of cocktails yet, but had a chance to do uh, tasting with them back in um, back in December, and they sent all the supplies and everything, and so I could kind of mix it up there. And then you're doing the, the cocktail class there while you're online in a live event, which is which is a really cool idea. So anyway, cheers to Nick Streeter. I appreciate you being a longtime member of the Whiskey Lore Society, and if you guys want to join, you can do so. The links are below. And also remember to like and subscribe, and uh, you will help build up the show here and help me afford more whiskeys to review. So today we're going to be talking about Chattanooga whiskey, and this is the 91 proof. And the first two releases that they did were the 91 and the 111. When I went to the distillery, got a chance to taste both of those, and... I will be honest, I prefer the 111, mainly because it just hits a little bit more of those notes that I really, really like in a whiskey, but both of these are really good whiskeys. This one, at 91 proof, is very affordable. This is going to be under $30 for you to buy. In fact, I found this on sale. It's what introduced me to Chattanooga whiskey, my local liquor store had it on sale for like 26 bucks, and I said... I like the bottle, it sounds interesting, high malt, what's that all about, let me taste. And so I took it home, tasted it, and the idea of a high malt bourbon is that it is, it has elevated amounts of malt. Most of the bourbons that you get, malt is in there just as a conversion uh, product. So. A lot of distillers will say, eh, you know, malt, whatever, it's not really influencing the flavor. But if you go to Scotland, they're making whiskey out of nothing but malt. And you can't say that their whiskeys aren't flavorful. They're very flavorful. So it's really interesting to see a distillery that wanted to go a little higher in the amount of malt that they put in. It's still a straight bourbon. And I had this conversation with Lisa Wicker the other day. She's in New York with Widow Jane. And I said, is there a New York straight bourbon whiskey? Because I hadn't really seen one before. And she said, well, I thought the straight designation was just Kentucky. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I thought it was national. And it is national. I had to, sometimes people will ask you something and say something to you. And then you start questioning your own knowledge on it. But straight is something that's a designation that can be handled across the U.S. It has to be aged at least two years to be getting the straight designation. The question is, can they attach the name of the state to it, saying, you know, we have Kentucky straight bourbon. Can we say New York straight bourbon or Tennessee straight bourbon? Well, they don't actually say Tennessee on there, so I guess... I guess that's still one that I'm not 100% sure on, but yes, you can find straight bourbons across the country, and the idea of a straight bourbon is that it has to be at least two years old, and if it's younger than four years, it has to have an age statement somewhere on the label. So this has a really nice, fruity kind of a nose to it, unlike 111, which has more, like, chocolate notes and, and that sort of thing. There's a little apple peel in there, a little baking spice. Some of the things you anticipate when you're drinking a, a whiskey that has malt in it, a high amount of malt. Just a nice sweet nose on that one. What they do with this is they age it for two plus years and then they move it from toasted and charred barrels into this huge 4,000 gallon uh, Solera. 4,000 or? Yes, 4,000 gallon. And um, 
there it's just like the forever infinity bottle it just you add more whiskey into it and then you're constantly tapping it and pulling whiskey out of it it's a very interesting way to age a whiskey and so a lot of distillers are starting to do that so if you see solera you know what that means really have grown to appreciate this whiskey. Stone fruit, pepper, a little apricot in there actually. I noted a little citrus and it actually, I think you get more lemon rind towards the finish on this. What I love about this whiskey is that it coats the palate and there's this caramel I call it the Werther's original effect, where your mouth just feels coated with this whiskey. There's some notes of like a, a, a little bit of leather note in there. Everything is really subtle though, beyond the, the stone fruits that really kind of stand out on this whiskey from front to back. I think the reason I didn't initially like it was because, I won't say I didn't like it, I, I, I've never not liked it. It's just that when I first tried it, I hadn't really had a lot of stuff that had kind of peach apricot. And I'm not a big peach fan, even though I live in South Carolina who has more peaches than anybody in the country. Sorry, Georgia. But, um, you know, it's just, peach is not one of my things. So it, it, it was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I'm really digging that. But over time now, I'm starting to pick all these other flavors out of it. And it's really nice. It has a nice finish on it. And so uh, I think it's a very good whiskey. Yeah. Ooh, am I going to go as far as to say very good? It's good. It's good. I might say very good. I'm on the fence on that one. Not sure, but uh, definitely one worth checking out. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this presentation, go ahead and uh, comment below. That would be great if you have tried this or you have some interest in Chattanooga Distillery. I've been there. I've talked to Tim Pearson, who is one of the founders. And Tim, actually, if you want to hear my interview with him, that is available on the Whiskey Lore Interviews podcast feed. So you can go check that one out. That was not filmed. I actually went to Chattanooga to do the interview with him. And we tasted their, um, their fall version of the Bottled and Bond, which... I will do a tasting on that. Uh, there's actually a video of me doing a tasting on that previously if you want to go look for it. But I'll do a retaste coming up sometime later on this year. So again, thank you for joining in and like and subscribe and cheers and slong javad.